All right. Guys, today we're going to be shooting some slugs from the Henry Lever Action 410. I know this is a video that I promised you guys a long time ago, finally getting around to it. We're not just shooting any slugs. We're shooting my favorite 410 slugs, the Brennickies. So let's take a closer look at them. So you guys that have been around the channel for a while, you know I've done some 410 slug videos in the past using different styles of slugs with different shotguns. And I've come to really appreciate the Brennicky style slugs. Now where I'm at, there's basically two style of 410 slugs that you're gonna, you're gonna find readily available. That's the Brennicky style and the Foster style or rifled slug. The rifled slugs do okay, but they, they tend to fragment on impact whereas the Brennicky style penetrates much deeper without, without uh, coming apart than the Foster style slugs that I've tested. So I really like the Brennicky style. So when I set out to pick up some slugs for this Henry 410, I wanted to go with the Brennicky, but remember the Henry has a two and a half inch chamber. So I, I found these, which are two and a half inch Brennicky slugs. They're the exact same slug. They're just in a two and a half inch shell. I pulled these apart. They weren't colored when I took them apart. I colored them. I colored this one blue so that I knew it came from the Magnum, the three inch Magnum. And I colored this one red because it closer matched the box of the two and a half inch shell. So I pulled them out, weighed them, and they're basically within one grain of each other. So we know they're using the same slug. The advertised muzzle velocity on the Magnum slug is 1,755 feet per second. And that's right at what we were getting. I averaged 1,750 feet per second with the 26 inch barreled TriStar Viper G2 in 410. With the close encounter two and a half inch slugs, they're advertised at a 1500 feet per second muzzle velocity. The only way that, I haven't talked to Brennicky, I'm not sure, but the only way I figure that they got that low of a velocity is if they check these in a, in a revolver like the Judge or something like that, because it even mentions here at the top, awesome Brennicky power for your shotguns and revolvers chambered for two and a half inch cartridges. Revolvers has kind of, they've kind of changed the game for the 410 ammunition. There's such a variety available now because of the popularity of the 410 slash 45 Colt revolvers. But the velocities that I got when I shot this round over the chronograph were in line with this. I think I actually averaged 1,769 feet per second. So I actually got a better velocity with this slug in the 24 inch barrel of the Henry 410 than I did with the Magnum slug out of the 26 inch barrel of the TriStar Viper G2. Now I realize I'm not quite comparing apples to apples with those two shotguns, but I do find it quite revealing that the difference between the average velocities of the two rounds was less than the standard deviation of either round. So they're pretty close. And the whole point of me throwing all these numbers at you was to show you that with the Brennicky slugs, you don't really lose anything by going with the two and a half inch round, at least velocity and energy wise. 
Now, if you've got a shotgun with a three inch chamber, I recommend that you shoot the three inch slugs. It puts the slug out here closer to the forcing cone. So when you fire the slug, it doesn't have to make as much jump forward before it hits into the forcing cone. And if you've got a shotgun with a two and a half inch chamber like the Henry, of course, you'll want to stick with two and a half inch shells. Now, all these numbers don't really mean anything if we can't hit anything. So let's get down to the range and try to shoot a few groups and see what we come up with. So, I haven't shot any of these on paper yet. I've got a target set up at 25 yards. Let's see where we're at. Just got the front bead sight. Now, there's two different models of this Henry available. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. This one is the one with the bead sight and 24 inch barrel. You guys almost let me shoot without my glasses. You gotta speak up when I do that. I'm gonna hold right dead center. I'm going to rest that on the foil arm instead of the magazine tube. All right, let's see what I done. About an inch and a half inch group. So n not terrible for my first group of the day especially. But as you can see, we've got a key holding issue or a tumbling issue. The slugs are hitting at an angle. They're not hitting straight ahead like they should be. They're hitting at an angle. Uh, and that, with these Brennicke slugs, that wad does stay with it. It all stays as one unit when it goes down range. But I'm getting that yaw, and they're kind of hitting at an angle. Now this shotgun takes the choke tubes. And I'm running an improved cylinder choke tube. I think we can get rid of some of that yaw or tumbling by going with a little tighter choke. I've got a modified here. We'll switch out to a modified choke and see if that doesn't change that. Look at that barrel, how beefy. That's the beefiest 410 barrel I've ever seen. But what we're going to do is remove this choke. What we want to start with is have our action open. Anytime you're fooling with a choke tube, you want that action open. We've got this wrench. It doesn't fit real well. It's not the wrench that came with the gun. It's coming out of there. So that's our improved cylinder. That's a good place to start when shooting slugs. Probably can't see that improved cylinder on there. 
This is the worst focusing camera that I have ever fooled with. There it is, improved cylinder. Wow, the camera is aggravating. And I'm gonna put in a modified. That'll bring us up our constriction uh, just a little bit tighter. And the reason I, I'm thinking about trying this is because I had a similar thing happen when I was testing the TriStar Viper G2 and I went to a little tighter choke and it cured it. Those Brennicky 410 sl uh, slugs tend to like a little bit of choke. And those are, you can shoot them through a full, modified, improved cylinder, cylinder. Um, they're safe for most chokes. I got that wrong in a previous video when I said that they were, weren't for any choke, but a viewer corrected me and I looked it up and indeed you can shoot these through any standard choke. Not a specialty choke like a turkey choke or anything like that but like full through cylinder. So let's shoot another group and see if we get that same yaw or tumble. All right, that is a much better group. Between those farthest two is less than an inch. You're talking about three quarter of an inch or so group at 25 yards with a brass bead that, you know, that's, that's not too bad. Now, at least one of those slugs did still hit at a little bit of an angle, but we got a big improvement with the modified choke tube over the improved cylinder tube. These slugs are flying much truer now. I can actually see the ridges in the paper here, in the paper target, where the rifling on the slug itself has, has cut the paper. So I know that these slugs are flying nose first. So that's a big improvement. And it also shrunk our group size quite a bit. So I like to see that as well. I wanna try one more 25 yard group and I'm gonna flip this box over so we've got fresh cardboard behind the paper. I'm just gonna leave this same target on here and we'll flip this box over. And I wanna take a better, I shot with the magazine tube resting on my shooting wrist. I actually should have had the four end resting on my wrists. So I'm gonna try that and see if I can tighten that group up a little bit, but I should put the group somewhere in here. Let's try that one more time. All right, so with that other group, I had the shotgun resting like this on the magazine tube. And I know if I don't put it here, someone's gonna say that's why the impact was high left. And they could very well be right. This is the proper way to do it with the four end resting here. I don't know why I put it in there with the magazine tube. Uh, just a honest mistake. It happens sometimes. So let's try it with the four end in the rest and see what kind of group I can get out of it. Again, at 25 yards, and that target is going to appear upside down because it is upside down.
Man, this Henry cycles great. Which Henrys are known for that. All right, let's have a look. All right, so pretty much identical results. Less than an inch, probably about three quarters of an inch. That's really good, considering that shotgun just has a large bead on the front for a front sight. I'm happy with that. And our impact point is exactly the same exactly so it didn't change anything whether i rested on the magazine tube or on the wooden four end that that didn't make a difference all right so with no sights to adjust and the point of impact obviously not being lined up with my point of aim it's going to limit my use for slugs in this shotgun but i'm going to try to use a little kentucky windage and hold low and right on those knockover targets and just see if we can make a hit. And those targets are about 60 yards away, I would guess. So, Three out of four, I'll take it. All right, guys. So that video didn't go exactly as I had hoped for. The point of impact is not in line with my point of aim, so it does limit my use for slugs in this particular 410. Don't shoot a whole lot of 410 slugs anyway, but I like to have that option. Now, Henry does offer two versions of this lever action 410, and this one, is not the slug version this is the field version it's just got a bead up front for your sight drilled a uh, receiver is not drilled and tapped I, I can't just throw an optic on here and adjust to my point of impact to my point of aim it does actually shoot the slugs accurately you saw you know it, those 25 yard groups were fairly good i just can't adjust my point of impact to my point of aim with this shotgun does have the interchangeable choke tubes the other model Henry offers is made for shooting slugs. It's a 20 inch barrel and it has rifle sights, fully adjustable rear sight, so you can adjust your point of impact in and all that stuff. Uh, it has a drilled and tapped receiver, but the trade-off is it doesn't accept the interchangeable choke tubes that this one does. And as you saw in today's video, those choke tubes can have a huge impact on your group size and how your slugs actually fly down range. Most of today's slugs are made to shoot through any choke. And if you you can use those chokes to fine tune how those uh, slugs stabilize and how they fly down range. So my suggestion to Henry, and I say this as a Henry fan, I love their rifles and in this case shotgun. What I would do is I would go ahead and drill and tap the receiver on this model. That way, if someone wants to use this for a, a certain time of year, for a certain season of hunting or whatever, whatever particular uh, game they're trying to take out, whether it be coyote or whatever, they could throw an optic on here, sight in slugs, and be good for the season. They get done, pull the optic off, they're back to the field shotgun. And my suggestion on the other model is, go ahead and thread it for the choke tubes. If you're going to buy the, the model that's made to shoot the slugs, it's, it's a cylinder bore. It doesn't accept the choke tubes. 
But why not go ahead and add that versatility to that shotgun so that you can fine tune those slugs? Uh, just a suggestion from a, from a fan. I really am a Henry fan. I'm sure some of you guys have picked up on that over the, uh, the years that I've posted these videos. So wish them well. They make a fine American made product. And Henry's very open actually to suggestions. This, this shotgun actually came from their suggestion box. That's why this shotgun exists. So hopefully they'll hear my suggestions and, and maybe even implement them, I, I don't know. But drill and tap both receivers, make both models, except the Invector style choke tubes that you've put on this one. I think they'd be good to go. So that's all I've got and I'll talk to you all again soon.